What's going on, YouTube? It's Bushy's Mama. You know, you guys know I like interviews uh, to get to know people better. Now, uh, Buddy Redbow was uh, a Native American. I want to say Cherokee. Cherokee, I think. Oh, gosh. I can't remember. I am blanking. Um, however, I've played a couple of his songs. He was a an artist back in 75, 76. And um, so I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead and listen to this interview. It was recommended a while ago. So I like interviews. So let's see, let's see what inspired him. I, th I don't think we need, well, I'll put on closed captions for people who don't speak English. So no. Well, it's only in English. Okay, well, I'm gonna put, is this um, auto-generated or what? I don't like auto-generated. This never makes any sense, so I'm gonna leave them off. Uh, so let's listen to some Buddy Redbow. For Colorado, ladies and gentlemen, Buddy Redbow. Oh, I hope it's an interview. I thought it was. Maybe it's a concert. Yeah, let's shut the light. What's that I see here? Circling over the black hills. Its wings expanding, slowly descending every time. It opens his eyes, lightning bolts fill the skies, and a thunder, it is crashing, it can be heard, it's the thunderbird, it's the thunderbird, could this be the lead? That my grandfather told me When I was just a young boy When I was only seven He said, grandson, someday When a dark moon covers the sun And a thunderbird comes at you Do not run You're gonna ride on a thunderbird You're gonna soar now, isn't that everybody's, um, well, maybe not, but every, I think everybody at one time or another, another, when they were younger, dreamed about, well, flying is one of the top things that people dream that they can do, and, or riding on a big bird, it, when you're younger, that's just such a, such a dream but I know that with Native Americans they their dreams were prophetic oftentimes like my ancestors before me I will take the journey back to the other world where I will be forever free I'm gonna fly oh so high I'm going back you never die. I'm gonna ride on a thunderbird. I'm gonna ride on a thunderbird. Someday in your lifetime, if you should ever see the thunderbird, have no fear. No, don't be scared. He'll take you back. He'll take you home. He'll take you where. The buffalo roll, and you're gonna ride on a thunderbird. I'm gonna ride on a thunderbird. I'm going back on a thunderbird. I'm gonna ride on a thunderbird. Ooh. He's got the classic um, '70s voice for like folk music. Uh, very, I mean, very classic for the time period. 
I'm gonna ride on a thunderbird. Pray, but don't cry for me. And I also love it when um, artists sing both in their native tongue. I mean, Dimash and Watch and you both do this. They sing part of the song. I mean, and, uh, uh, you know, I think Soy Yang does it and, you know, sings part of their song in their native language and then in English and I like that a lot. I'll be back. Just you. seen a small example of some of the songs that Buddy Redbow sings and songs that he has written himself. A little later on in the show he's going to sing Black Elk and Run In and Run. But right now we'd like to talk a little bit about oh, good. Interview. how you got started into singing professionally. Well, when I was about uh, 19 years old I, the first professional show I did was in Los Angeles at the uh, Palomino Club. A friend of mine was playing there and they had a talent show. They paid I think it was $200 if you want. And, no. I went on there and I sang, That's good for tried back to sing then. Run Indian Run, and I won a talent show, and, and from there on I got um, introduced to different people in the business, and uh, now I'm uh, working for a man named Dick Darnell out of Denver. He produces a group called Stallion. They're just out now, and they are on Casablanca Records. 
Huh. And that's who I'm working with now. I don't think now. I've ever heard of Stella. We're doing an album in uh, November. Huh. Of uh, ten of my, um, what we call the spiritual songs, uh, such as Thunderbird, you know, and Black Elk song. I think what a lot of people don't realize, that uh, especially non-Indians, <clears throat> is that uh, the the uh, art of writing seems to be a natural talent for a lot of Indian people because they write from deep within. Interesting, we used to call them Indians, and now it's Native Americans. Um, I don't really know why one was offensive and why we changed, but we tend to do that with all all everybody it's just uh i don't understand it but used to be i would call them indians and um i don't know native american seems to fit them because they were here first um and i understand that but i don't understand of the offensive part of it in themselves just the way you compose some of your songs yes and in fact some of them come in my dreams I'll dream a song and I'll wake I up in the morning you. and it'll be there. The music, uh, everything. And he said, I know it's it's not really me. It's a gift from the spirits, mm -hmm. you know, that gave me these songs. In fact, when I wrote Thunderbird, uh, I wrote that for my grandfather, um, Pete Tubbles. When he passed on, he used to tell me that legend about the Thunderbird wow. in the Black Hills. See, we didn't have no radio or TV and that when I grew up, so I used to sit and listen to the old people tell stories. And, and uh, when he passed on, uh, that day afterwards I had that dream and a song everything came to me lyrics and all. Now you're trying to get started into the business uh, with Tatanka Records yeah. and uh, tell me some of the problems you ran into and trying to get financing to get this business going. Oh I went to various organizations and talked to different people about to see if they would finance an Indian record company you know um, to uh, do traditional music uh, to put down legends uh, take the Indian talent that we have all over the country and try to give them a helping hand and uh, get their music heard and get them into places where people wouldn't ordinary ordinary take an Indian like Indians like I sneak into a lot of living rooms with some of the records that I'm putting out you know that otherwise wouldn't let me in you know and, and some people sit and listen to some of the problems of the Indian and uh, I was really uh, disappointed because a lot of people I thought would help me uh, just said that there's not a market for that. Or, um, they gave me one excuse after the other. Uh, they said I could do um, go down to Pine Ridge there and uh, at the office and put in for some things, which I did. And I did appear in Rapid too. I never heard a word from them. You know, a lot of guys took down all the ideas and probably threw it in a trash can. I don't know. Yeah. You know, we talked uh, a week ago to some people from an Indian business development organization. And this is one of the things that uh, we ran into in, in our conversation is that the business that you're going into, in essence, is an intangible business. It's an entertainment business, and therefore, uh, right. you know, it's, it's uh, shaky to begin with, according to the people who are lending the money. Is this what you run into? Oh, that's, that's one of the things. And then they say a lot of the things that I want to put out and say are so polit political. People are scared of the things I'm saying. Uh, Boy, he'd make it fine right now. Most of the songs are political. Um, I, I listened to an artist just this morning, Bushy, um, put him on, on the TV um, or on YouTube on, on our big TV. Tom McDonald, oh my goodness, he is courageous with what he sings about because it is so controversial, I'm kind of scared for him. But, you know, and so back in the 70s, well, really, it, they pick and choose what's okay to be controversial about, I think, because, you know, war po politics songs really, because of the Vietnam War, uh, hit it big. But so it's, it's not so much that it's just blatantly political, it's that the industry probably picks and chooses what political things they want to uh, focus on. And, and now, you know, with people being on YouTube and independent artists that don't go with a record company, they sing whatever they want to be political about. Whew. 
through my music, let alone... Let me go back. That's one of the things, and then they say a lot of the things that I want to put out and say are so political. People are scared of the things I'm saying uh, through my music, let alone uh, people that I record. And they're saying that I'll just uh, put more uh, wood on the fire if I go in and do what I'm doing. <laughs> That's what, what they love the now. What you're putting out in your songs, trying to get across to the people? What I'm trying to get across to them is try to, to go and learn about the real American Indian, to learn what they're really made of, not what they hear about in the news or see anything. If I, like if I was to go downtown and uh, run over a bunch of people and shoot up a bank, uh, they'll have me all plastered all over the papers, the front page and everything. But if I, like what I'm doing now, I've got little or none, pub no publicity at all. See, I'm trying to do something good, you know for the Indian. And that's why they, they seem to take the bad part of the Indian and always push it up front. There's people that are even unknown that are very beautiful people throughout the country that are Indians that have done really nice things that nobody even knows about. You know? Yeah, so I run into that all the time. Oh, Could you tell us a little bit about the album you this have? This here uh, is uh, my first album that I put out. It's about Chief Fool's Crow. Mm. He lives in um, Kyle, South Dakota. And on the album is one side of it's in English, and the other is in uh, oh. the Lakota language. And he tells uh, uh, kind of a lecture type thing. He uh, tells uh, little legends, and he sings some of the songs that have never hardly ever been sung that people won't ever get to hear unless through something like this. And in it, I have uh, uh, this here pamphlet that comes with it, and it tells. It's written, all the things that he says are written in English and in, in a Sioux language. Sioux. You know? And it shows pictures of his home, different places. But what was really something here that I really, I was, I was driving away from his home. I turned around and looked, and we were talking about the President of the United States. And see, this is how he lives. He just looks short. <laughs> this is our chief our, of the Lakota Nation. This is his home type thing, you know. Uh -huh. But still, the, the, most, the wisdom that this man has is unbelievable. The, the love he has for all people, not only the Indian, it's all races. You know, and that's why I'm trying to put this across, and it's going to be so um, and, uh, throughout the United States and overseas. Yesterday, I got a phone call saying that uh, Casablanca Records is going to carry this uh, in Europe. So um, that was a great break for me, you know. Now, do you actually have offices uh, for your recording company in? Yes, Denver? in Colorado. In Colorado, it's on um, South Lapan, right in Denver. And if uh, and I have uh, these here out here around town, the Sioux Museum, you know, and uh, and um, I think they're the only ones that are really going to carry it. The other places have taken a copy and said they would get back with me, but I've never have as usual. You know. So how did you finally end up? raising the capital to get this thing going. I know the expense of buying the equipment is probably phenomenal. Oh, geez. I mean, oh now they have those um, quick starters or, uh, shoot, quick start or on Facebook where if you want to do a project you just, and you want support from people and they just donate through, what is that thing called? You know. Uh, finally, I met a man that uh, I worked with seven years ago. In fact, he recorded me one time a long time ago, and he was struggling in the business. And now he's on top. He's right in, the, right in with the big, big wheels, and his name's Dick Darnell. And he, the love that he has for the American Indian is unbelievable. He feels what I feel in my heart. And we got to go together, and he knew I had this dream ten years ago. And he said, are you ready to do it? And I said, I sure am. And we came down. and got Grandpa Full School together and we recorded some at his home and some in Denver at the studio. Nice. And so that's how I finally, I, would, I, I got help from uh, someone that believed in what I did. And the uh, Indian business people that I thought would really flip out over something like this just uh, kind of shone me off. Hmm. So where do you go now? What is your future as far as uh, recording? And well, uh, we've got... Um, one more album that we want to do, uh, we've got it all recorded and set uh, after we get this one rolling, is uh, the Sons of the Ogallalas uh, singing group. It's an Indian singing group that I'm putting out. And my album that I'm coming out on my own label is uh, we'll start production in November. And we'll have 10 songs on there, so uh, that's where I'm heading now. Will they be a lot of the songs that you'll be singing for us? So you have yeah, for four of these here, these, these four are going to be on there. 
What about some of the other songs? songs some of the about? other songs are like songs about like my friend the buffalo tells about uh, a little Indian boy coming from the reservation and 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 his standing with his grandfather looking through a fence seeing the buffalo up here at the parks. Oh. And uh, the little boy remembers that after his grandfather's gone, a like buffalo are gone, and he tells oh. about oh. those things how he, he wished he could cut that fence and let them buffalo run free, you know. But he tells him, he said, yeah, I'm just like you. I said, I'm on a reservation fenced up too. So that song tells in there. And uh, I've got, uh, I'm trying to do a variety of stuff, you know, uh, just mostly spiritual stuff, you know, like this one song I got is a journey to the spirit world is tells about uh, when uh, you die, supposedly where you go, where I believe I go, I'm going to go. You know, and it tells, says in the song to get yourself ready, prepare yourself, you know, every day. And then I think American Indian, from the day they're born, they're preparing themselves to die. I've learned that, you know, from my grandparents, and I do. Every day I always get up, I'm happy to see the sun, and I'm always happy to be alive, but I'm ready, you know, when it's time to go. I, I feel I've uh, prepared myself to a point where it's, if it happens even at this moment, I'm, I've uh, done things to... You well, know, that reminds me. Well, that's a good philosophy. We're not promised tomorrow. You can do, and I believe I believe in taking care of yourself. I believe in, um, you know, doing the best thing for your body. You know, exercising. Uh, you know, I believe in healthy living, but in the end, healthy living isn't going to keep you alive every day. I mean, it's. We're not promised tomorrow, so I like their philosophy of being prepared daily to meet your maker. Um, so, there you go. Message, you know. Buddy, uh, we were doing a show recently at Holy Rosary. We did the uh, Red Cloud Art Festival, and we'll get in a little bit. I know you're yeah. an artist also, but uh, the uh, person that was doing the news article was a non-Indian, right. and uh, he viewed the art, I mean, they were beautiful art from all over the United States, from the Southwest, yeah. from Oklahoma, uh, you probably attended the show. Yeah, it was beautiful. And one of the comments he made in passing was um, why this uh, attitude on death, why is everything, you know, why the premonitions, why the pictures on death? And uh, I think that he missed the whole point in that it was actually, actually uh, a part of the whole circle. Yes, the circle of life. Is and it circle, wasn't yeah. focusing necessarily on death. Is that what you feel about it? Or? Oh, yes. I have a, a lot of artist friends of mine. I do a little drawing and painting now and then, but uh, everyone always says about, in fact, there's one uh, artist from Richard Table where I grew up named Eddie Tubbles. I'm sure you've seen his paintings in the country. Yes. And he used to paint up here in the Black Hills, you know. He got run off there, you know. He was sitting along the road painting on people. The parks people ran him off, you know. You know, hmm. But his paintings were of, you know, like uh, the, the burial scenes and things like that. It's beautiful stories mm -hmm. that he was telling. Mm -hmm. And uh, he's had people come up and say, why uh, do you have a uh, yearning to die or what? He said, no, I just want to show that uh, life is a circle. You know, you're born, and you live, and you die. That's just it, you know. A little bit about, I know you're into, really into, uh, with your whole life, into a spiritual aspect now with Chief Fool's Ground things. Right. Tell us a little bit about what you feel personally on, on the, the transition. I know, like myself, you probably were brought up in a, a Christian religion, not by choice, but yeah. you saw something different in the Indian religion. Tell us a little bit about what your feelings are. Well, about see, it. I was more fortunate than a lot of uh, the Indian kids today because in the year when I grew up, uh, I was fortunate to have a lot of the uh, traditional Indian people around me. And so they... Uh, I hung out with them more than I did with the uh, church-going people. You know, my grandma went to church, though, and in fact, she used to uh, have me sing in a church. You know, but I was always longing to go to a Uwepi or uh, go to a powwow. Powwows were the were the highlight of my life. You know, we went to two or three a year. You know, and uh, the young people did today they don't know how fortunate they are. They got cars to run to all these powwows. There's a powwow every weekend. Then we only had like two. You know, but they were big ones. You know. And I feel that uh, all the, um, the younger people, the teenagers now, are going back to the traditional way of life. I just came back from a Sundance over in um, Porcupine, and I seen 20, 30 young people 
participating in that religion, that Sundance religion. Hmm. It and made so my heart feel good. It's a whole new world for a lot of the Indian children now. Oh, it is. Much different than what we had. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yeah, there are uh, a lot of the big hardships I think we've faced. <laughs> well, we're going to take a short break and we're going to get right back with Mr. Ruddy, Buddy Red Bull. Well, that's interesting. Um, I, I, I wondered about, you know, because I know that early on there were a lot of missionaries that would uh, evangelize to the American Indian. And so I didn't know in today's world what their culture is. Uh, well, this was in the 70s, so I still don't know what in today's world their culture is. Um, are, are, are they tradition? What is the ratio? Is there a big traditional um, American Indian religion slash um, uh, a religion or philosophy well you know I know about the spirits and and all that but is there an organized church type thing that they go to um, yeah very interesting uh, we all get inspiration from places people um, different philosophies you know, I myself am a Christian, uh, but we all draw inspiration from even art, music. It's it's uh, it's whatever feeds your soul. Um, so interest is. I found this very interesting. I have never sat through an interview with an American Indian. And so I found this very interesting. It looks like uh, this stopped before there was more music. It's at the end of the uh, video. I hope you enjoyed it. Like and subscribe. Subscribing helps with our channel. One thing I would like to say is um, in March, um, Bushy Boy, Bushy Beard, uh, graduates from law school. And I'm suggesting if and, and asking if people would send him a little congratulatory card, homemade card, store-bought card, or trinket or anything. Um, he's got his P.O. box down below. So if you would um, send him a little congratulation thing, that would be awesome. Also, uh, Bushy just got a new label for this channel. And I'm looking, not lo label, logo for this channel. And I am also looking for a logo for my channel. My channel is more, uh, well, he, he wanted to make it more inclusive of the fact that I join in and, and Bushy Dad joins in. And on my channel, we do a lot of getting in shape, a lot of trips. It's kind of a family thing. Um, so in the month of February, we're asking if you wanted to draw a logo type thing that would be appropriate for my channel. At the end of February, I'm going to send a $50 um, US uh, dollar um, gift card to whoever I, whichever one I pick to go on my channel. So I hope you enjoyed this. I hope you learned something. Uh, I, I feel like I did. Um, like and subscribe. And until next time, YouTube, smile like you mean it from the Bushy Fam.